Hello everybody. In our lesson for today, we are going to start practicing about the quadratic function, in particular, vertex form of the quadratic function and transformations done on it. So, first of all, as we know, the symbol to write function, it is f of x equals. When the function is quadratic, it means that the x input has exponent 2. This is called the parent form of the quadratic function, which is the simplest form of this function. Quadratic function has other two very important forms, which are standard form, which is f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, in which the a coefficient of x squared, it is not equals to zero. And the vertex form, which is f of x equals a times x minus h, all of it square plus k, in which h and k, they represent the vertex of this function, of the graph. The shape of the graph of the function, quadratic function, it is called parabola. I'm going to write again here the vertex form. So, the shape of the graph or the graph of the function, it is called parabola. And parabola, it can be opened upward or maybe it opens downward. Parabola opens upward when the a coefficient, it is greater than zero, which means it's positive. And it opens downward when the a coefficient, it is less than zero, which means negative. The lowest point in the graph, it is called vertex, and the highest point in the graph, it is called vertex 2. When the vertex is the lowest point in the graph, it means that parabola has a minimum. And when the vertex is the highest point in the graph, it means that parabola has a maximum. Through this point, we can draw an imaginary line which splits parabola into two symmetrical parts, the left part and the right part, the uh, left uh, part of it. We can do it here in the same way. So this imaginary line splits parabola into two parts, the left part and the right part. This line, it is called axis of symmetry. If you remember from equation of the line, when the line is vertical, like the axis of symmetry, the equation of the line, it will be, so, if the line is vertical, the equation of the line, it will be x equals a constant number x equals constant. As we said, I'm going to draw here again parabola. It doesn't matter if it opens upward or downward now. So this, let's say upward, which means vertex, it's the minimum. And the axis of symmetry, it's this one. And if you can see, this axis of symmetry passes through the vertex of the parabola. Vertex has coordinates x and y. So the x coordinate of the vertex, it will be the value of the x-coordinate, it will be the same, the axis of symmetry. So this axis of symmetry, x equals, it will be the same, this value. Now, let's see transformations that they can happen to the parent form of the quadratic function in vertex form. 
I'm going to write it g of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. The a coefficient represents a vertical stretch or compress. The h represents, as you can see, in the parent form, it was x only. And now we have a minus h for it, which means this h represents a horizontal translation. And the k from outside, it's a vertical translation. So whatever happens for x, for the input, the transformation, it is horizontal. And from outside, it will be vertical for y, the parent form. Just a fast reminder, yeah? Because we are going to need to use this. So whatever transformation it happens for x, that transformation it's called horizontal. It can be a horizontal stretch, horizontal compress, horizontal translate. And from outside of x, the transformation it is called vertical. In our lesson for today, we are going to find two kinds of questions. The transformation given, then we have to find the image of the function, or both of them, pre-image, image, they are given, and we have to describe, describe that transformation. And let's try to practice a little bit. They say, how are transformations of the graph? f of x equals x squared. This is the parent form related to equation of another quadratic function. So the parent form of the function it is given. This is the pre-image. And here it's the image with the transformations. So all we have to do now is to describe. We have to name the transformations happen to the parent function. The best that you can do, and you will find it easier little by little, is to start from the parent form and to make here a very simple information uh, uh, observation. You see x, the input it is given into brackets. So I'm going to put the x on the other side into brackets too. And as we said before, everything it happens inside the bracket for x, it will be a horizontal transformation and from outside, it is a vertical transformation. And then we take the g of x, separate negative 1 over 2. It came from negative 1 times 1 over 2. So here is not only one factor, it's about two factors times x plus 2 all squared. From left to right, we'll take the transformations and try to name them. In parent form, it was x only. In front of it here, in the left side, it was nothing written. And now I have two factors. The first one, the factor negative 1, represents reflection. This is what we learned before. So we recognize the transformation from the operation used. When it is about factors, the negative factor, the negative, it came from factor negative. One, and that one, it's a reflection. Reflection, it can be done across x-axis or across the y-axis. As long as it's outside the x, it's the reflection across the x-axis. The other factor, it is 1 over 2. And 1 over 2, it's between 0, 1, which means this transformation, as long as it's from outside of x, it comes from outside the bracket with the x, this transformation, it is vertical, is done for y, and because it is 1 over 2, the value of the factor, which means 0 0.5, which means it's a value between 0 and 1, this one, it will be a compress. So this is a vertical compress, Factor 1 over 2. We're going to the right direction more. 
In the bracket, it was x only. And now we have a plus 2. Plus or minus operations, they help us to remember that here it's about a translation. We did the plus for 2. We did plus 2 for x, which means the translation, it is horizontal. So we will add horizontal translation. You can take the x plus to separate and solve for x. Make it equals to 0 and solve for x. From here, x equals to negative 2. Negative 2, it's left of the origin. Yes? So then the horizontal translation, it will be 2 units left. So these are the transformations that they were applied to parent form. Let's try a little bit more. So the parent form f of x equals to x squared. As long as the x is given into bracket here, I will do the same thing. I will put the x in bracket only. And again, whatever happens inside the bracket is horizontal transformation. And from outside, we have the vertical transformations. And it is given j of x equals 2 times x minus 1 squared minus 3. From left into the right, we will take the transformations one by one in order. So in the parent form, in the left side of x, there was nothing written, which means factor is 1. And now we have a factor of 2 from outside of the bracket. This transformation, as long as it's outside the bracket, it will be a vertical transformation. To its factor and is greater than 1. So this is a vertical stretch. Factor 2. We go more inside. We go more into the right side. We see inside the bracket it was x only. And now we have an x minus 1. Plus or minus operation. They help us to remember. Then there it happened. A translation. And it was done for x, which means horizontal translation. I will take the x minus 1, separate, make it equals to 0, solve for x. From here, x equals to 1. 1, it is right of the origin, so it is horizontal translation, 1 unit right. And the last transformation, before here, in the parent form, after the bracket, it was nothing written. And now we have the minus 3. Outside the bracket, the transformation, it is vertical. Minus operation tells us that there it's a translation. And 3 unit down. Let's try a little bit more. f of x equals x squared. First of all, put the x in brackets. And g of x equals the negative in front of the bracket. It came from factor negative 1 times x plus 2 all of it squared. From left into the right. In front of the bracket, it was factor 1 positive. And now we have the factor negative 1. Factor negative 1 remind us that there was a reflection. It is outside of x, outside of the bracket. So it's down for y, which means it's a reflection across the x-axis. We go into the right side, it was x only, inside the bracket it was x only, and now we have x plus 2. So the transformation was done for x, which means horizontal transformation. Plus or minus operations, they mean translation. We take the x plus 2 separate. We make it equals to 0 and solve for x. It will be x equals negative 2, which means... Two units left of the origin. f 
of x equals x square. Put the x into the brackets. G of x equals x minus 1 square plus 2. So, from left to right, in front, in the left side, Factor 1 without being written, you know, we, do, we don't have to write the factor 1. And here in G of X, it's nothing also. So, vertical stretch compress, it didn't happen. Inside of the bracket, it was X only. And now we have minus 1 for X. Because it's down for X, the transformation is called horizontal. And because of minus operation, there was a translation. Take the x minus 1 separate and solve for x. From here, x equals to 1. 1 is positive, so it will be horizontal translation, 1 unit, right. From outside of the bracket, in the right side, there it was nothing written. And now we have a plus 2. So we said if it is outside the bracket, this transformation, it is vertical. Plus or minus, it's about translation. Plus 2, it means vertical translation, 2 units up. Let's try more. Describe the transformations. So I'm going to do the same as I did before. So I will take, first of all, f of x equals x squared, put the x into the bracket, and take the question 1. g of x equals x minus 3 all squared. So then in front of the bracket is no change, after the bracket is no change, the change it happened inside the bracket, so this transformation is horizontal because it was done for x. Minus operation tells us that it was a translation. I take x minus 3 separate equals to 0 solve for x. From here x equals 3. 3 is positive. So horizontal translation 3 units right. Let's take the other question. G of x equals x minus 2 all square minus 2. And the parent form was f of x equals x all of x square. So from left to right, in front of the bracket, we have no change. So we move on inside. It was x only and now we have x minus 2. So the transformation was done for x, which means horizontal. Plus or minus operations tells us that there was a translation. Take the x minus 2 separate equals to 0 solve for x. From here x is 2 positive. So it's a horizontal translation 2 units right. Minus 2 it comes from outside the bracket. So the transformation it is vertical. Vertical. Translation, because plus minus, it means translation, two units down. And the last one, f of x is x squared. The parent form, it's the pre-image. And then g of x equals x plus 5. All of is square plus 1. So left of the bracket is now change. We go inside the bracket. It was x only and now became x plus 5, which means the transformation is horizontal. Plus or minus its translation. Take the x plus 5 separate, make it equals to 0, solve for x, it will be x equals negative 5, which means horizontal translation, 5 units left. After the bracket in the right side, we have plus 1, so it's outside the bracket, which means vertical, it's a vertical transformation, 
plus operation tells us there it's a translation. One unit up. Let's try more. x equals x square and g of x equals 1 over 3x it means 1 over 3 times x all of it square from outside the bracket is now changed so the change happened inside the bracket for x which means the transformation is horizontal here is not about translation because the operation used it is times. So this is a stretch or a compress. To decide which one of them, then we have to take the value of the factor for x. And here remember that always if the transform how to decide if it is stretch or compress, we are going to take the reciprocal of the given factor. The given factor is 1 over 3. The reciprocal of it, it is 3. 3 is greater than 1. So this transformation, it's a stretch factor 3. Next one, f of x equals x square and the image g of it, it is 3 times x minus 1 all of it squared. In the left side, we have a factor of 3. So it's from outside the bracket, it's from outside the x. So this transformation, it is vertical. The factor for 3, it is greater than 1, which means a vertical stretch, factor 3. Inside the bracket, we have change. We have a minus 1 for x. So as long as it's inside the bracket, it is horizontal transformation. Plus or minus, in our case, it's a minus. That one, it's a translation. And take the x minus 1, make it equals to 0. Solve for x. x is 1. 1 is positive, so it's right of the origin, which means horizontal translation, 1 unit, right. Question 6. S of x equals x squared, this is the parent form, g of x equals negative, the negative in front of the bracket, it came from factor negative 1 times, x plus 3 squared plus 2. So the negative 1 factor, this tells us that there happened a reflection. It's from outside the bracket, from outside the x, so it will be negative y. It's for y. So then the reflection was done across the x-axis. We go inside the bracket, it was x only, so this transformation, it is horizontal, plus it's a translation. Take the x plus 3, separate equals to 0 and solve for x. From here, x is negative 3. Negative 3, it's left of the origin, which means 3 units left. And the last one, it's plus 2 from outside the bracket, which means vertical, plus, it means translation, 2 units up. So, in these questions, the transformations, they weren't given. It was given the parent form, it was given the pre-image and the image. And we found, we described the transformations. In the next group of questions, the parent form, it will be given, the pre-image is given, and all we have to do is to find the image after the transformations. So, let's see. They say, 
write a rule for G where G is the image described by the transformation of the graph of F and then identify the vertex of that parabola. So it is given F of A equals X, put the X in bracket square. Whatever happens inside the bracket, the transformation it is horizontal and from outside it is vertical. We'll take the transformations one by one and do it in two steps. They say vertical stretch. If it is vertical, this is done for y, which means from outside the bracket. Stretch by factor of 4. Factor, it means that we'll do times 4 from outside the bracket. It will be 4 times x squared. And I move on. A reflection in the x-axis. Reflection is given by factor negative 1 for x in the x-axis. It means we keep the x and we give the negative 2 y, which means outside in this side. So we will put negative 1 times 4. It will be negative 4 times x squared. Follow it by translation. Translation means plus or minus. Two units up. If it is up or down, it's down for y. So it will be outside the bracket. So it will be plus 2. So this is the image g of x equals. From here, we can say vertex has coordinates. Remember that the vertex form is f of x equals a x minus h square plus k, where vertex has coordinates h, k. So the x coordinate of the vertex is h, and the y coordinate is k. From where get the h? From the x, here inside. But inside of this bracket, we do not see any plus or minus down for x. So we can say vertex, as long as no plus or minus, the h, the x coordinate, it will be 0. And k, it's from outside, it's here. So in our case, k, it's a positive 2, so 2. So this is the coordinate of the vertex, 0, 2. Let's try more. F of x equals, put the x in bracket. This will help you a lot. Keep it in your mind. Whatever happens inside the bracket is horizontal. And from outside, it will be vertical. In the left side, you will put the times and after plus or minus. Yeah. So let us do it again. F of x is x squared. First of all, vertical, shrink, shrink or compress, it means the same thing. Vertical, it means from outside of this bracket into the left side. Factor 1 over 3, we will put 1 over 3 times x squared. And reflection in the y-axis. If it is in the y-axis, it means that x, it will be negative. The x, it will be negative, yes? So then, here, I will put 1 over 3 times negative x all of it square. Translation, 3 units to the right. Left or right, the change is down for x, so we will go here inside the bracket. And if it is right, we will put negative x, and it will be minus 3 all of it squared. And this is the g of x image. From here, vertex has coordinates. If we solve this for x, it will be x negative 3. The k from outside, it is 0. So this is the vertex of the function. On your book, on page 78, we have question number 30. And f of x equals to x squared. 
let g of x be the function whose graph is translation for units left. So right or left, the transformation was done for x. And if it is left here, we'll put x plus 4 squared. And one unit up plus 1. And this it will be the g of x. From here, we can say vertex has coordinates, negative 4 and 1. f of x equals x squared, the parent form. The graph is reflection in the x-axis. So when we have reflection in the x-axis, the negative 1 factor, it will be given to y, which means from outside, it will be negative x squared. And translate 3 units right. So 3 units right, it means 4x. Negative, keep it. And we'll do minus 3 squared of the graph. So this is the g of x, the image of the function. Let's try a set ACT question. Which of the following functions I will make it bigger a little bit. So, which of the following functions, A, B, C, D, E, which one of those represents a parabola that has vertex, coordinates negative 3, 4, and this parabola passes through the point, coordinates negative 1, negative 4. It means this point, it's on the parabola. That we can easy say, easy choose which answer it is correct. As long as the vertex it is given, we are going to use the vertex form of the function. So we will write the rule first of all, which is a times x minus h squared plus k. The vertex it is given, so here negative 3, it will be the h, and 4, it's the k. So instead of this h, we will substitute with negative 3. The k, it will be the 4. So it will be f of x equals a times negative negative, it means x plus 3, all of it square plus 4. Now we will go back and check the given answers. The best that we can do is to eliminate the ones which they do not look like this one. So we take the first choice given. x squared minus 5. In here I have x plus 3 written, and here it's only x squared. So this one I eliminated. It cannot be my answer. In answer B, I have x plus 3, and I have the x plus 4. So this one, it can be my answer. I will keep it for the moment. The next one, see again, I see the x plus 3 and plus 4. So I will keep this one too. In answer D, I have x plus 1 and here it's x plus 3. So I will eliminate the D. In answer E, I have x minus 3 and me, I got the x plus 3. So I will eliminate this one. So or B or C, it can be our answer. Which one exactly that I will decide which one is the correct one that I'm going to give to use the given point. Point, any point it has x and y coordinates. So let's see. So we know that any point it has x and y coordinates. And the given point, in our case, has coordinates negative 1, negative 4, which means x equals negative 1 and y equals to negative 4. And these two values, we will try them in these two answers. The one which will give us a true identity that one is going to be the correct answer. So I will check it first in B. So B is negative 2.
x plus 3 square plus 4. Where x we said is negative 1 and the y it is negative 4. And now we try, we get the simplest form to see if this identity is true or not. We still don't know. So from left to right, we will simplify. It will be negative 2 and negative 1 plus 3, all of it square plus 4. We will simplify it more equals. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 square 4. 4 times negative 2 is negative 8 plus 4. We will simplify more. Negative 4 equals negative 4, which is true. Which means the point with coordinates negative 1, negative 4, it's on this parabola. Then the correct answer, it will be the B. This is the correct answer. Thank you.